what happened to the DCEU? Well, today, I want to look at how it started, how each of the movies were in retrospect, what a lot of the major controversies were, and my theories overall as to what actually happened with it. With Aquaman 2 finally coming out in December, and as we all have seen, it did better than the Marvels, but not good enough to be a success, I feel like it's a good enough time to finally talk about the DCEU as a whole. Now today's episode is brought to you by This Hot Sauce Is. You see, when I'm not sitting here making you amazing videos, so incredible that we get billions of views a video, I don't know the actual numbers, Dan just tells me we're getting a billion views a video. Uh, when we're not making a billion views, I have decided to make a hot sauce. And that is this hot sauce. This hot sauce is, oh, wait, yo, oh, yo, oh, whoa. Oh. This hot sauce is, yes, this hot sauce is a product that I have created. It has got the full calorie counts. We have gotten FDA approved and it is veteran owned because I am a veteran and it's great to put on pulled pork, put on your sandwiches, put on grilled chicken. It's not too spicy because it's our first one. We're working on a spicy second one, but if you want to support us outside of what we're doing here on YouTube, check out this hot sauce is. And also if you want to keep these videos going and get early access to our comic books, check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash comic story. And it's the only reason we exist today. Day. So let's go all the way to the beginning. The DCEU's beginning. It all began with Superman in 1938. Okay, okay, wait. Too much knowledge. Let's go to the beginning of the actual movie franchise. So fun fact, the concepts, just the concepts of the DCEU actually started in 2002 with a director named Wolfgang Peterson. But it was shelved because Warner Brothers didn't want to have a merged universe. There was a running idea within Warner Brothers that Superman and Batman were such big names, they didn't need to have a crossover to be successful. So the decision was, instead of starting the DCEU, they would make individual Superman and Batman movies. Now, technically, the DCEU's first attempts started with the Dark Knight trilogy. You see, with the success of Iron Man, which kicked off the MCU, Warner Brothers wanted to turn the Dark Knight trilogy into the DCEU beginning. But Christopher Nolan and Christian Bale wanted nothing to do with that. They wanted their project to be a three-movie project that was remained in reality. Like, it just stayed in a normal reality. So Warner Brothers moved to their backup plan, which was to kick off their DCEU with another movie. Now, you're thinking I'm going to say Man of Steel, but no. That Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern movie, that was the beginning of the DCEU. Or at least Warner Brothers thought it was going to be the beginning of the DCEU because you see, it didn't exactly do well. The critical reception was poor and the fan reception was very poor when it came to Green Lantern. And even me, a big Green Lantern fan with a Green Lantern tattoo, it was okay, but I mean, come on. No one's sitting here fighting that Green Lantern was a secret movie that was amazing. While these were going on, they were filming their solo Superman movie. Remember what I said where they were like, Batman and Superman are strong enough to support their own franchises? Well, that was still in play. When Christopher Nolan didn't want to turn Batman into the DCEU, they barely argued it because Batman can support everything on his own. Why would we bother? Well, Superman was going on with Man of Steel, written and directed by Zack Snyder. Now, I've heard both ways that this was always intended to be the beginning of the DCEU, but I've also heard that due to the fact that the fan reception and the critical reception were very good for Man of Steel, regardless of your personal opinions on Man of Steel, that it was decided that that would be the official start of a DCEU. Also, side note, DCEU, what we've been calling this since the beginning, is actually what they never called it. Apparently, it was called the DC Cinematic Universe, the DCCU. And the general idea was that it would be keeping in vain with the MCU in that way. In 2015, when there was talks about Batman versus Superman, there was an article published that called it the DC Extended Universe. That name quickly caught on, calling it the DCEU. But apparently, we were told in an interview that in two, by 2017, no one internally called it the DCEU. It was the DCCU. I know. Confusing. What, what, what's the moniker and the whole idea behind this? Anyway, that kept pushing forward, and it wasn't officially referred to as the DCEU until March 2020 by Jim Lee. That was the first time someone official in the camp of DC and WB called it the DCEU. I never knew that until I was doing research for this video because I've always thought of it as the DCEU. Anyway, as the story goes, Man of Steel came out. It was 
overall a success good enough that they wanted to incorporate it into an overarching plan, so the decision was to bring in Zack Snyder to then make a sequel to Man of Steel. Zack Snyder wanted to do a Batman vs. Superman movie because he's a fan of that classic storyline, and it was decided that they would do Batman vs. Superman, which would serve as a reboot for Batman, bringing Batman into this DCEU so that they could then go to a Justice League movie. That's the history as the start of the DCEU. Now, I'm going to go into the controversies because there's a whole lot of those. But let's have a look at the movies that came out, and I'm going to give you my thoughts on each movie quickly as we move through them. Now that it's been over 10 years since the beginning. So Man of Steel came out. I, to this day, think Man of Steel is an okay movie. I think it's a much darker, more moody version and take on Clark Kent. At the time that this came out, the New 52 was hot in like effect. It was still like a big deal. In the New 52, Superman was a moody, edgy guy. So I felt like the movie just lined up with that. I don't think it's a terrible movie. Not classic Superman, but whatever. Batman v Superman, if you watched the Ultimate Edition, is not as bad as watching the theatrical edition. The problem with Batman v Superman is we are now going down this dark, edgy, gritty path that Zack Snyder is forging, which in my opinion divided the DC fans as a whole. DC is normally deemed this more bright and cheery universe. We don't have a lot of dark and edgy. So having an entire movie follow-up to Man of Steel, which was dark and edgy, turned off a lot of the fans. But it did start the Snyderverse talks and the fandom that wanted to have this dark and edgy DC universe. Some of you may be asking, why did people want a dark and edgy universe? Well, if we take out Zack Snyder's fandom from the equation, the general consensus was by having a dark and edgy DC universe, it is the exact polar opposite of the quippy, cheery, everything works out Marvel universe. So the idea was that this way DC wasn't copying the MCU, they were forging their own path ahead. I, for one, actually didn't mind a lot of the Snyder movies. Uh, I know a lot of people are straight up against them. I didn't think they were terrible at all. Were they the most incredible movies I've ever seen? I do not agree with that. Moving forward, we had Suicide Squad, which is another thing full of controversies. I'll touch on it here because most of us know about them. But the original director, David Ayer, got removed midway through. Due to the middling response to Batman v Superman, WB was already in, like, full swing to try and correct the Snyderverse. The effects of that were first seen in Suicide Squad, where they kind of cut up this dark and gritty Suicide Squad movie and turned it into a poppy, campy kind of movie. Looking back on Suicide Squad, I actually just rewatched it the other day. Uh, Natalie, my wife, was upstairs watching every superhero movie on Netflix, and they all just came out on Netflix. It's not terrible, but my philosophy when it comes to is it a good or bad movie is how much of it do I remember? Like, you can have the most incredible movie ever, and if I don't remember anything about it, it's not really a good movie because it didn't stay with you. And that's how I feel about Suicide Squad. Rewatching it, it had its problems, it had its hiccups, but it was okay. But did I remember it until I rewatched it? Not at all, which to me isn't a very good movie because it just wasn't memorable. Moving forward, we had Wonder Woman, which did big, big numbers. I think it did a billion dollars. We'll look at the revenue in a second on a flow chart that Dan found, which is awesome looking. But Wonder Woman is great. I actually really enjoyed the first one. I thought it was a fun movie. It did a great job of portraying Wonder Woman. There were some interesting decisions made in the movie that I don't know why they were other than maybe the corporate overlords. Like, I honestly think Wonder Woman would have been better if there never was a CGI fight against Ares in the ending. And the discovery was that man is just evil at times. But then they decided to be like, no, 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 no. I, that would have been a cool message. But check out our CGI fight. You know, and I was like, I feel like the movie was there. It would have been a perfect superhero movie and ballsy in a great direction for the DCEU to take if we had ended it before getting to the obvious CGI fight finale. Next, we had Justice League, which Zack Snyder's Justice League is a better version of Justice League. It's also the most pretentious movie I have ever seen in my life. Why is there like three sung intros for Aquaman? Why do we have to have the Amazon's theme every five seconds? As a, a creative person myself who handles a lot of artistic stuff, uh, I do appreciate what he did with that. The music, the atmosphere, all of that was great. But the first hour and a half of Zack Snyder's Justice League was just such a slog because he wanted to show you all these cool scenes. 
As much as I love Zack Snyder's work, sometimes I wonder if he would just be better making those videos that are on all the TVs at your favorite like Best Buy because those are a display of music and art and color. And he just makes amazing scenes like that. But when you put 20 of them in a movie, it ruins it for me. Anyway, mini rant about uh, Zack Snyder. Joss Whedon's Justice League, what even was that? Okay, what even was that? Z Z Joss Whedon's Justice League wasn't terrible, but to me, it's like the Suicide Squad movie. You walk out of it, you go, oh, that scene was stupid. That was a mistake. This one was okay. And a week later, you forgot you saw the movie because it was just that forgettable, making it a bad movie, in my opinion. Zack Snyder's Justice League, I still remember the scenes he put in. And I also remember the scenes that I was sitting there like, oh my God, get to the point. <laughs> it's a superhero movie, man. <laughs> uh, next up, we got Aquaman. Apparently, I'm the only one in the world who wasn't a huge fan of Aquaman. I thought they were just trying to recreate Lord of the Rings. Because um, that's the only movie in the DCEU that succeeded at the billion dollar level that every superhero movie is trying to hit. I thought I loved a lot of what James Wan did, but I just felt like eh, it was okay. It was all right. Uh, next up, we got Shazam, the original one. I thought that was a very fun movie. I don't think it was bad at all. I don't think it was incredible. I do like. I liked the idea of the DCEU going in this more fun direction, not all the way MCU, but we're not doing dark, moody, edgy Superman. I, I liked this middle ground we were kind of achieving with Shazam and Aquaman. Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. That movie was terrible. That was a terrible, terrible movie. It was a great idea. Great idea to do a Harley Quinn solo movie. Uh, use Cassie, uh, I think, K Kane is her last name in the comic? Cassie. Uh, basically, Orphan, one of the Bat family. Using her as a completely reinvented, brand new character, stupid. What a terrible idea. Using a, a Black Canary in a new, completely different, reinvented role, stupid. Just use the one we know. And then the fact that they put out the name of the movie. The name of the movie, if you don't know, for the first two weeks was Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. That name is so big, it does not fit on theater marquees. I laughed about it with Dan when we would go by the local movie theater. And I'd be like, no one knows what that is. And then two weeks later, they changed it to just say Harley Quinn. What the hell happened to WB's marketing department that someone thought that was a good idea? Let's make the name so big that the title character is the last two words and it won't fit on anything. So I think the movie probably could have done better if they all weren't idiots. Like it just seems like the most, I have arguments on a daily basis with Dan about titling our videos on YouTube to make sure that the clickbait name is in the beginning so that people know what they're going to get. And the people that get ma that make six-figure salaries to figure this stuff out didn't think to put Harley Quinn in the title of the Harley Quinn marquee movie thing. Whatever. Then Wonder Woman 1984 came out. What the hell happened? Like, okay, so this is... Looking at this list of when the movies came out. We got Man of Steel. Okay, pretty good. Donna, Batman v Superman. All right, it's got its memes, it's Martha jokes, blah, 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 but it's not terrible. Uh, Suicide Squad. Okay, we're we're starting to have like corporate oh, oh, uh, meddling. But Wonder Woman. Okay, no, this is good. Wonder Woman's good. We like this one. You're letting Patty Jenkins do her own thing. Gal Gadot do her own thing. You're making a good movie. Oh, back to corporate overlords. We got the Joss Whedon Justice League. What the hell happened there? But then we then we bounce back. James Wan made a great Aquaman. I mean, it doesn't matter of my personal opinions because overall people enjoyed that one. And then we go uh, down to Shazam. The problem with the DCU up to this point is that it's literally been... We're going to put a chart up here and Dan will show you the revenue. It's literally... like It looks like a heartbeat. It looks like a heartbeat. You know what, Dan? I'm bouncing all over. We're going to get to the terrible movies in a minute. Put it up now! If you look at the chart here, it literally looks like... Beep! 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 Bonk. It's just like, what the hell happened? That chart is what was earned by these movies. Literally, after Aquaman, it seems like everyone just gave up on the DCEU. I didn't realize it was that obvious, but it was just like, Bow. it's on life support. It's on life support, everyone. Oh, get the paddles. Get the paddles. <laughs> and that's what uh, WB was doing next, because what came out next was Wonder Woman 1984. Wonder Woman was a success. It made a bunch of money. Well, let's do another one. Give complete control to Patty Jenkins. And that was a terrible idea. 
Okay, one, you establish Wonder Woman in a great place. And the ending of Wonder Woman, the first one, ended with like her appearance in Batman v Superman or linking it all together. Cool. That worked out very well. Why are we then jumping to 1984? Why are we then trying to bring back Steve Trevor? Why are we then doing a wish machine with Maxwell Lord? And why does none of that movie make any goddamn sense? What the hell happened? All right. So anyway, terrible movie fo uh, immediately following a poorly titled movie. Okay. We then move into Zack Snyder's Justice League. I already gave you my opinions on that. Look, I stand by my statement. That movie was never going to exist. We had a video on here that we had to remove. What happened to Zack Snyder's Justice League? And WB refused to do it. What was going on with that? Why they refused to do Zack Snyder's Justice League? And you can look it up. Everyone at WB put the blame of the failure of the DCEU onto Zack Snyder. I do not agree with that at all. Because they gave the man the keys to the movies. They knew the movies that this man made. He made Sucker Punch and 300. And I can't even, I don't even know the other ones that he made. Like off the top of my head. Like this is the style he's going to make. So unless they were completely clueless as to what he could do, he gave them exactly what they were expecting. Then the, they didn't make a billion dollars and they blamed Zack Snyder. During the filming of the original Justice League, it's all over the news, his daughter committed suicide. So obviously he had family turmoil. WB used this as a way to push the man out, which is terrible. On the books, Zack Snyder just stepped away. If you look more into it, it looks like WB was pressuring him to step away so that they could bring in Joss Whedon, who had just had a successful Avengers movie, and they wanted to have him do the Justice League movie. It seems like a bullshit PR, what the hell is WB doing kind of decision. Since they adamantly blamed him for the failure of the DCEU, he was kind of unceremoniously re removed from the projects. This started the Snyderverse movement. We're going to look at that in our controversy situation. But the Snyderverse movement then had people hounding WB. And what they were doing, and this is why I, I don't like the Snyder bros, is they had an idea that if they just kept yelling at WB, jumping into any live stream they did and demanding the Snyderverse, going out and doing things like trying to uh, derail a DC conversation by demanding the Snyderverse. These fans felt that if they just kept yelling at WB, they would eventually get the Snyderverse cut. And from what we were hearing behind the scenes, that was making WB even more adamantly against the Snyderverse. They refused to do it. The people in charge were like, we are never touching this. If we give them an inch, they're going to want a mile. To make it even worse, Zack Snyder, once he was unceremoniously removed from Justice League, then began to leak images of his version of Justice League. So it just kept fueling the fire that there was a Zack Snyder cut movie, okay? Apparently there really wasn't because he because he eventually got approval to finish Zack Snyder's Justice League, not because WB believed in the project, but because they felt that if they could convert all those Snyder bros into paying customers of HBO Max, that would be worth the money. And they gave him $70 million to go reshoot and finish Zack Snyder's Justice League. So I stand by my original statement that Jack, Zack Snyder's Justice League doesn't really exist. But this version of Zack Snyder's Justice League did come out in March with $70 million of reshoots, which proves the original one never existed because he claimed it was a complete movie that needed nothing but then got $70 million to go and do it. Anyway, at this point, with the release of Zack Snyder's Justice League, we had December 2020 COVID hit. This is the middle of COVID. Wonder Woman 84 came out completely bombed. Zack Snyder's Justice League came out. It was a blip on the radar for like a week. And then the Suicide Squad came out. The Suicide Squad was James Gunn's first project. And it felt like a James Gunn project. Very much in vain with Brightburn. Very much in vain with Guardians of the Galaxy. And I'll tell you right now, I loved the Suicide Squad. It's probably my favorite original movie in the DCEU was that movie. And I never thought a movie about all the guys that were supposed to kill off was going to be my favorite in the DCEU. Uh, following that, we had Black Adam, which was the most cookie-cutter superhero movie I have ever seen in my entire life. I don't think it was terrible. I don't think it was good. And it doesn't make any goddamn sense. I don't care what The Rock wants. Why did we make a whole movie about Black Adam? If The Rock wanted to be a superhero in the DC Universe, why don't we pick out any other normal-looking superhero with an actual background and power set? To make this worse, 
DC Comics did like a three-year push to make Black Adam into a hero, so it lines up and makes sense that there's a superhero movie starring Black Adam. And it was the most cookie-cutter superhero movie I've ever seen in my life. The best element of that was Hawkman. He was awesome. They basically were like, how do we make Hawkman cool? Because he's just a character with a very niche audience because he just gets revived all the time. I know. Make him Tony Stark. And I'm like, that's actually, that works. That actually works. <laughs> if I was alive for hundreds of years due to reincarnation, I would be filthy freaking rich as well. Anyway, mini rant over about that. Black Adam. Then we get to the phase of what I like to call the we don't care anymore. 2023 had four DC movies. And we're going to talk about why I think these all failed. But even I didn't go see two of these. And this was the first year in this entire 13 years of doing comic storian that I just didn't bother. Shazam Theory of the Gods came out and came up in competition with like five or six other movies that we all wanted to see. And I didn't see a need to go see it. The Flash finally came out after years and years and years of reshoots, problems, and issues. And I thought it was okay, but it had its own litany of problems buried underneath the surface. Like everything from PS1 looking graphics that were not properly explained in the movie to the issue of just Ezra Miller in general. Then we had Blue Beetle, which is probably my second favorite movie in the entire DCEU. If you've not seen Blue Beetle, go see Blue Beetle. It was just a fun movie about family, about Blue Beetle. It was good. It was what the, that and the Suicide Squad is what the DCEU should have been. And then Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom which came out two days or so, what was it? Yeah, three days before Christmas. I was already on vacation, and my exact philosophy was, I don't care about this movie, and I don't have to see it for work. I'm not going to bother. And I didn't. <laughs> I'll see it when it hits streaming services, all right? And we'll do, a, I'll do a, like, a, hey, remember that movie I skipped? So now the question is, what the hell happened? What happened? Well, the biggest and most obvious answer is money. WB did not let the DCEU properly blossom and grow into any direction. They didn't let Zack Snyder make the Snyderverse. They didn't have a follow-up direction with a Kevin Feige. They didn't know what they wanted. What WB wanted was a billion dollars for every superhero movie because, you know, MCU is doing that, so why can't they? If you look at anything involving the MCU properties with Disney versus the DC properties with Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers considers Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman franchises amongst themselves. Then there's DC. While Disney looks at Marvel as a whole thing. They might look at Spider-Man as separate only because they don't own him, but they just look at it as one big property. DC sees Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman as being so big, we don't need to have a universe, which is why early on they didn't bother with it. The biggest issue with the DCEU, in my opinion, is that it just kept flip-flopping on tone, appeal, what they wanted to do. And that was everything from corporate overlords to changing the original Suicide Squad, changing the Justice League movie. They were just trying to cookie-cutter create this billion-dollar franchise. And they just couldn't get their hands on it. They couldn't get it because they just wouldn't let somebody be in charge. If you had just left Zack Snyder in charge, love it or hate it, you would have had a coherent, in tone, theme, and storyline version of of the DCEU. But as it stands, we got to the Justice League and then they built up the arrival of Darkseid and it just, oh, that's it, go make all the movies separate, but also keep referencing this DCEU thing. It was so weird. Like the appearance of Superman without Henry Cavill's face at the end of Shazam, that kind of a thing. Or the one emancipation of one Harley Quinn or whatever the hell that stupid movie's called, uh, where she references everything that happened with the Joker in Suicide Squad, but it's supposed to be its own thing. The controversies also continued to stack up. And I've got a list of them here from Screen Rant, which is pretty good. We have everything from the Amber Heard situation, where if you were unaware of like what the entire internet was focused on for like a couple of months, uh, Amber Heard went into a court dis dis disposition or whatever against uh, Johnny Depp. And we pretty much discovered that she has some mental issues. I don't want to be mean and lay into her, but she needs to go talk to somebody. And she seemed to be blaming Johnny Depp for a lot of things that he had evidence he didn't do. Okay. But that definitely left a bad taste in everyone's mouth for Amber Heard. Ezra Miller's another situation in which they were going around kidnapping people and like threatening people and entering into different fights and stuff like that. And while it'd be a fun time to just make fun of Ezra Miller over all the situations, they quite obviously have mental issues as well and need to seek help. But that also left a very bad taste in everyone's mouth when it comes to Ezra Miller and The Flash. Next up, we have Ray Fisher. And you may not have heard about the Ray Fisher issue, but Ray Fisher started a lawsuit against WB 
following the Justice League movie. The lawsuit claimed everything from sexism to favoritism to poor work conditions to you name it, it was in there. And his treatment in the in the Justice League movie from uh, Joss Whedon and Jeff Johns and everyone else involved with the movie. He made this big push to try and get people fired within WB, even going so far as to claim that he will never work with WB again unless they fire Walter Hamada. Walter Hamada, uh, I don't know his exact role, but he's high. He's, he's an executive who basically ran the DC arm. I don't know if he ran all of WB, but he was that high up. They started an internal investigation into WB. Like they hired people to come in and do an investigation to see if there was any truth to Ray Fisher's claims. The investigation claimed no. Ray Fisher said that's bullshit and started his whole campaign against WB a second time. In response, WB pretty much canceled his role as Cyborg, canceled him from Flash, canceled his movie, and they even went as far, and no one knows if this was like intentional or what happened, as to not give him a picture in the HBO Max profile and you might be wondering what i'm talking about but if you when hbo max are the thing and it wasn't just max if you went to hbo max you could take any one of your favorite movie characters from harry potter justice league and things like that and put them as your profile picture they removed cyborg everyone else is in there except cyborg so and there was an uproar about that until they put it in there we then had the controversy involving Henry Cavill, the, the man, the Superman, everything. And this poor man who just seems to be the biggest nerd that we have ever met and just, I just want to see him succeed, got everything from a mustache being digitally removed to his role being moved around and recast to being fired but not fired as they were going to bring in a different ba a, a black Superman for that movie was it something that Walter Hermata wanted to do and just basically not fire Henry Cavill but not you know put him in a movie then all the way to the point of Black Adam in which The Rock got Henry Cavill to announce he's returning as Superman only for them to then fire him officially I, like, holy, this is like a 10 year thing of just there being no third Superman movie and no more appearances of Superman. It was so weird and so many controversies, but that's not even the end. We've gone, what, four in and every actor has a controversy. Let's go to Ben Affleck. Everyone hated this man as Batman. It was reported that he was told to get off social media because everyone is giving him crap for being Batman. Then this man does one of the best portrayals of Batman I have ever seen and everyone's like you need to stay Batman and that gives him so much stress and anxiety that he falls back into his alcoholism and then on top of all of this WB is retooling everything canceling his solo movie canceling the movie that he's directing then he moves it all over to Matt Reeves then pretty much has to step away due to his alcoholism like holy crap this poor man just wanted to be Batman what was so hard about that Okay, then we got Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot also has controversy because she was actually in every... Gal Gadot does all the cringe stuff which the internet loves to make fun of. Like during 2020, when she made a video online on how all of her buddies make a video in which they said, imagine, and the whole video is about how she's living just like everyone else in COVID. You know the people in the 400 square foot apartments? Yeah, she's living just like you in her nine story mansion. <laughs> but she wanted you to know she's there with you. That became the cringe thing of it all. But I also, I only found this out doing this research here, but apparently Gal Gadot's movies kept getting banned in other countries. I didn't know that. She was former Israeli military, and because of that, any country against the Israeli military banned her movies. So that was a controversy that just didn't hit American soil because we didn't care. Here's the worst part. I'm not done. So we got Jared Leto was cast as Joker, and he made his own version of Joker, and it was terrible. No one, and I mean no one, agreed with this man's Joker. Okay, and he made this whole thing and then to make it worse while filming Suicide Squad, the only movie he starred in, he made it such a bad filming experience that no one wants to work with him again. How do you piss off Will Smith and Margot Robbie and, and whoever the hell played Captain Boomerang? I know he's famous, but I can't think of his name right now, but you know what? How do you piss these people off? 
I mean, everyone's in a Suicide Squad movie. He was mailing them like dead mice and stuff like that. Like, what is wrong with almost every one of these actors? Okay, <laughs> like the only people that are wholesome and still got flack was Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck, and Gal Gadot, our Trinity. And they, we got Batman going into alcoholism. We got Superman being kicked off world, and we got Wonder Woman being banned because she's fought in the military. Like, what? I, that's that's basically what happened to the three. What is going on with this stuff? Like, I obviously turned all their issues into superhero stuff so we can see what's going on. But anyway. And then Jared Leto, to make it even worse, apparently, in his words, there is an entire movie's worth of content that the Joker's in in Suicide Squad that was cut. Whoa. Is there, like, a hidden, terrible Joker movie? <laughs> oh. But it gets better. So going back to the Snyder Bro controversy... So here's what was going on with that. Let me go a little bit deeper into that. Zack Snyder was unceremoniously fired. The Snyder Bros and Snyder Movement made a movement to try and get his version of the movie out. And I actually agreed with the movement to an extent. The problem with the movement was there was a lot of extremists who would do things like go to live streams and bombard WB and all of that stuff with garbage trying to get... Like, that's not how you get this done. You don't win through attrition. You win when they go, hey, we want you to give us money to watch it. That's what happened, okay? But there was also really smart people in the movement, and they turned, you know, Restore the Snyder uh, Cut into a movement to bring donations and support to uh, suicide awareness, which I am fully for. That is a great movement. As a guy who's former military myself, I'm not going to go into it. I've lost quite a few friends, and it's not from being overseas. It's the aftermath mentally. So I am all for suicide awareness. I'm just saying that right now. But then they couldn't just take the win. So what happened is Snyder Cut finally came out. It doesn't matter if it's the original. It doesn't matter if it was locked behind a paywall. It existed. They got it. And two days later, the internet blew up with Restore the Snyder Verse. They couldn't just take the win. They had to blow it up with Give Us More Movies. At this point... They were arguing, bring back Henry Cavill, bring back Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck was done. The man left. He had no interest in doing this anymore. This drove him to drink again. Okay, like he was done with this project, but nope, that wasn't good enough for the Snyderverse. They wanted all those Batman movies with Ben Affleck in it. But then it got worse. Then it got huge in controversy. And I don't know what was decided out of this, so I'm not going to tell you if it's real or not. But there was an investigation into all of the Snyderverse stuff. And according to the investigation, this is sources that I can pull up and give to you, but according to that, about 80 to 90% of all of this Restore the Snyderverse, Restore the Snyder Cut, was fake bots. None of it was real. There was a very small portion that was real, and it was all fake. Was it actually fake? I don't know, because all the articles state that it was. Does that mean it really was? Internet always wants you to believe one thing. We don't know if it was real or not. Uh, my opinion, there was probably a lot of bots in it. I don't think it was 90%, but it makes for a better headline if I tell you that 90% of the Snyder boys were all bots. Now, that's not to say the DCEU was a total and complete failure. There was a lot of cool ideas and a lot of cool stuff that came out of it. The problem is it was mixed between a conflicting tone, a director issue, sur unsurmountable amounts of controversies and issues, and a studio quite obviously not caring about the properties. The biggest problem I think the DCEU had versus the MCU was a lack of love and care and passion for the projects, and the people who did care about them were pretty much getting suppressed and pushed out like David Ayer and Zack Snyder. Doesn't matter if you liked their cuts or what they did, they had a passion for what they were doing. If you look at the MCU until recently, Kevin Feige was the man behind everything and he was passionate about the projects they were building. And I do think part of the problems with the MCU right now is that that passion seems to have burned out after Endgame. Whether the man just finally hit his limit or Disney hit, hit pushed him to his limit with the TV shows, we don't fully know, but it doesn't appear like he's involved like he was before. But the DCEU never really had that Kevin Feige. They had directors who wanted to do things, and then they had corporate overlords who wanted a billion dollars per movie. And that was the overall issue. A fun list of things that the, the DCEU did properly was visuals matter. Look, I don't care if you like or hate Batman v Superman. Those posters, the visuals in that movie, some of that stuff is incredible. It looks amazing. It got the tone and the vibe across perfectly. Whether you liked it or not, you knew what was going on in that movie. 
Movies like Shazam allowed superheroes to be silly. You know, and we also had moments like The Suicide Squad. My favorite scene is King Shark trying to eat Rat Catcher and then telling her that's just because he has no friends. So she asks him to be a friend and he's like, friend? And it was great. And Sylvester Stallone as King Shark, genius. He sounded awesome, okay? <laughs> The Wonder Woman moments in her movie where she comes out of the trenches and does her stuff, it was just incredible, and it showed hope and optimism, and I still think that movie would have been better if there was just no CGI fight in the ending, but the message was man is just sometimes going to war. It's not being forced by Ares. This one brings up that there was a great, they showed that supporting cast help. Shazam had the entire Shazam family, and Blue Beetle had his entire family on the side. That was incredible. I loved Blue Beetle because of the family. If there was no family in that movie, I don't think the movie would have been anywhere half as good as it was. They just did a great job of making you be like, I care about all of these nobodies. All of these nobodies. I don't even remember their names in all honesty, and I loved them in that movie. And the last two things on this list here were that the soundtracks and the directors prove that they, I still listen to this day to the Batman soundtrack, to the Man of Steel soundtrack, to the Justice League soundtrack, because they're incredible. I'm a guy who listens to a lot of soundtracks in the background because of my ADD, and they're incredible. And they, this was proven by that. Just like having a good director on a project proves that it can be good. You don't need a corporate overlord. The, the Suicide Squad by James Gunn with his freedoms was incredible. That movie is great. I love it. Okay. But that's where we are. I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover with what happened to the DCEU and my overall opinion. I think it's a failed experiment. And the experiment is, can a corporate entity recreate the MCU success? And the answer is no. As proven by the overall revenue from our heartbeat chart, the more corporate overlords tried to go in and just fix it, the less money everything made. They never made as much as Aquaman. And for the record, Aquaman should not have been the number one highest grossing film in the DCEU. It should have been a Justice League movie. If you look at all the movies in the Avengers' first 10 years, it was every Avengers movie that did the most, with Spider-Man as a close second. I think Spider-Man beat out the first Avengers, but I'm not going to pull up charts and stuff for that right now. We're not doing an MCU video. All right, so this was in the notes, and we didn't even touch on it because I just got so excited that I could. I was trying to think of the stuff off the top of my head. But kind of a big thing, at the end of 2022, to top all of this off, Warner Brothers threw in the towel. They just said, you know what? If The Rock can't sell our DC universe, we're done. And almost immediately following the DCEU's version of Black Adam, which was a subpar movie, they decided to announce that James Gunn will be taking over the DC reigns. Now, for the record, in my opinion, before we get into what happened out of that, that should have been the end of the announcement. They should have said, James Gunn is taking over the reins of the DCEU, and he's going to pick it up where it's left off. So 2023 will be the last of the movies of the former regime, but we will be moving forward. That would have made you go, hey, I should still watch the 2023 DC movies. What they did instead is they had him come out and basically state that 2023's movies, all of the movies that tanked the worst out of everything, were not important. They don't matter because he's rebooting everything with Superman Legacy in 2025. That is where his universe will begin. Now, this started a whole bunch of problems. One, my argument, one of my arguments is if you want to sell products like Shazam, in Blue Beetle to the comic book fans, then they need to know that it's going to be important because it has to link in to an overarching universe. To the normies, you need to make an interesting movie. It's very difficult because on one hand, I want to say that they all should have been linked together and that's why he should not have announced that he's restarting the universe because then you're like, well, these don't matter. But on the other hand, these movies should have been able to stand on their own to the normies. Overall, my opinion is in is basically when he announced that it was right at the tail end of an oversaturated market and people being burnt out by the MCU trying a bunch of things that no one gave a shit about on top of the fact that DC had just had a terrible last couple of years. If you actually look at the graph that Dan put up here, a little heartbeat monitor, the overall movies that came out during that period, which was Shazam, Flash, Blue Beetle, and we don't have the numbers yet for Aquaman, but I think it goes on par with The Flash because Aquaman's still in the theaters. They actually didn't tank any worse than the other movies tanked. The fact is, the DCEU has been on a just a steady failure trajectory 
since 2020. They didn't do any worse or any better. That's because no one cared. And James Gunn put the nail in the coffin. The last people who would have cared no longer cared. I did not go see Shazam Fury of the Gods or Aquaman because if you don't care and I don't care, why am I seeing those movies? And I feel like that was a lot of people's expectation when it came to Shazam and Aquaman. Now, did James Gunn's announcement actually ruin the DCEU? No, I honestly don't think it did. Based on the graph, they did just as poorly as Birds, as Wonder Woman 1984, as The Suicide Squad. All of these have done poorly. The only ones that had a slight increase was Black Adam. And what that proved is even The Rock can't sell a mediocre movie. Not that Black Adam was interesting. But there's not much more to say about the James Gunn thing because it's all theory crafting at this point. But we did feel that if I did not make a quick mention about it here at the end of the video, you all would have said, what about the James Gunn thing? The fact is the DC Universe was on a decline overall ever since Aquaman. Like... Shazam was way lower than everything before Aquaman. The DCEU has effectively been dead since Aquaman 2018. So is that because everyone's getting a little oversaturated with, with superhero movies ever since Endgame? Maybe. Is it because they didn't put out any real good movies and neither has the MCU since then? So most people are having the attitude of, well, I don't have to see movies. I think it's more that. Because Spider-Man animated, Spider-Man main movie, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 have all proven if you make a good movie, we still want to see it. And if you interlink it into a giant universe, we, we will see it. It's got to be good, and it's got to be some giant overarching storyline, and do not waste your time with 10 Disney Plus series over the course. You know what? That's a different argument. Different argument entirely. What I'm getting at is... I don't think James Gunn's announcement ruined it. I think we were already in this trajectory. I'm just excited for Superman Legacy. But now Dan's going to cut back to the rest of the video because I don't know where he's going to put this in. Anyway, that's my overall opinion on the DCEU. And that's all the stuff that seems to have happened within it in retrospect. If there's much deeper dives on things, let me have comments down below what I may have missed. And we might be able to do a whole other videos on the other crazy stuff. But I did a bunch of research to try and find like compilations and a lot of it I already knew. And that like none of this did I have to look up and research. I just have some notes over here to keep me on track. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, let me know if you knew all of that or if you didn't. And let me know your opinions on every movie. Go write novels down, down below and we're gonna read them all, okay? We'll do it like on an episode of Comics Experiment, which is coming back over at Absolutely Marvel in DC. And if you want our two weeks early access, join us at Patreon. All right, guys, I will see you next time right here, and I'll see you next time.